sisters, I want to share a story that brings tears to my eyes. The prophet Noah, may peace be upon him. He was the prophet who called his people for years on end, years on end. وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا نُوحًا إِلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ فَلَبِثَ فِيهِمْ أَلْفَ سَنَةٍ إِلَّا خَمْسِينَ عَامًا Nuh alayhi salam, Allah says, we sent him to his people. He lived with them for a thousand years, less 50, 950 years. He lived for much longer, but with his people, calling them to Allah, 950 solid years. He reminded them, come to Allah. Imagine a Nabi of Allah. A messenger of Allah, 950 years. Do you know how many people accepted his message? The maximum number ever mentioned is 80. And the minimum is 11. So somewhere between 11 and 80 people. In how many years? In nine and a half centuries. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him thereafter, and this is the point I want to raise, that every time you call them, and everyone who has had a reminder, we wrote it down. We know about it. Your ears have heard so many reminders about salah, about dressing, about abandoning zina and adultery, about abandoning sin, about abandoning pornography and whatever other sins there are, about abandoning all of them and engaging in that which will please Allah, reading the Quran, going out to learn lessons, enrolling in some school and trying to learn more about Allah. You've heard it a million and one times, so many times. Every single time you heard it, you need to know ma asabaka lam yakul That which got to you was never meant to miss you. Allah knows. He planned for it to get to you. And this is why the angels of death, or should I say the angels, the gatekeepers of hell, will ask all those who will be doomed to hell as they're entering hell. What's the question? قالوا بلى ولكن حقت كلمة العذاب على الكافرين. Towards the end of Surah Zumar, Allah makes mention of how the people of Hellfire will be entering Hellfire in groups, and as they're entering, the angels will ask them a question: Didn't Allah send you reminders and messengers telling you, warning you about this day, warning you about Hellfire, reminding you that this is what the outcome of those who have been disobedient will uh, disobedient will be? And the people will say, Yeah, they did, but now it's too late. Mm. Which means Allah knows reminders have come to you and to me. Messengers and messages from the messengers and messengers of the messenger have come and they've spoken to us and they've told us we've had reminders in the form of books, in the form of the Quran and the Sunnah, in the form of lectures, in the form of CDs, in the form of radio programs, in the form of television programs, in the form of the internet, in the form of whatever other messages you might have got on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram. We're talking of the correct usage of these items, not the wrong usage. You know, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and so many other things, they are just like a knife. You can either use it for something good, or you can use it to commit murder, to do something bad. It's up to you how you use it, subhanAllah. But remember, every time you see a message, you will be questioned about it. Hmm. You will be asked about it. Wallahi, there will come a day when you will be told, look, we sent you three and a half million messages. We don't want to be stuck to say, oh... <coughs> I didn't take it seriously. Tick off your list. How many messages have you had? Start ticking today. How many messages do you have? You will tick off before you know it by the end of the year. If you are really conscious of it, you will have ticked off at least 20,000 reminders from Allah. Minimum. I promise you. Different types of reminders have come to you. But the thing is, look at Nuh alayhi salam. When he complains to Allah, Oh Allah, look at my people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions what Nuh alayhi salatu wa salam says. رَبِّ إِنِّي دَعَوْتُ قَوْمِي لَيْلًا وَنَهَارًا فَلَمْ يَزِدْهُمْ دُعَائِي إِلَّا فِرَارًا Surah Nuh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, The Prophet Noah, may peace be upon him. He calls out to his people. He called, he's telling Allah, Oh Allah, I called out to my people day and night or night and day. And I call them openly. I call them in secret, but they are just going further and further away. How many of us hear a good Islamic message calling us towards Allah, going towards our own maker, and we are going further away. May Allah safeguard myself and yourselves. So Allah tells Nuh alayhi salam when he complains, Allah says, you know what? 
لن يؤمن من قومك إلا من قد آمن أو نوى Now, and this was 950 years later, now don't bother with them anymore. Don't bother with them anymore. None of those who have disbelieved will believe. The ones who have believed, that's it. The figure is closed. It's sealed. Now start preparing your ark and the punishment is going to come to all of those who remain. So that is why when the ark was being built, no one was accepting Islam. They started laughing at him and they kept on saying, Ya Nuh, sirta najaran ba'da an kunta nabiyya. Oh no, you've now become a carpenter, but up to now you were a prophet of Allah. They were laughing and scoffing. So Allah says, don't worry. Don't even turn towards their scoffing, not at all, because their quota of reminders is finished. That's my point. Wow, beautiful message. He's just trying to let us know that whatever we do, we should do the right thing at the right time. Even do the right thing always. Always do the right thing and don't follow the crowd. Don't follow what people are doing. Don't follow the trend. You know, it's good to imitate people, but imitate good things. It's good to, you know, follow people. You know, do as they do, but do what is good. The bad things don't don't imitate certain things. So you're just trying to give, a, you know, an advice to everybody how to do that. You should know what you're doing because we are all here for for a reason, for a purpose. God brought, a, brought us here for a purpose, so we should not be distracted by what we see around the world. We should dedicate our life mostly to God by worshiping him mostly and thanking him mostly so like he gave an example he said social media is a good thing facebook instagram twitter is good but if you are using it for dubious means for a bad reason then it's not right in the sight of god it's not right in the sight of god so he's just trying to let us know that you know anything you're doing you have to think very well you have to sit down and ask yourself what i want to do now is it the right thing with this they have an effect on me positively or negatively you know the kind of friends you keep matters the kind of you know places you go to matters the kind of things you watch matters so it's just you you know working on yourself you know nobody can 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 tell you oh don't do this don't do this as long as, long as you've matured you you know the right from the wrong so if you are doing something that is bad you yourself know you are doing it willingly nobody's forcing you to do it so you're just trying to say that in everything we should put our goal on heaven we should put our goal on paradise we should not think about this worthy worthy things on this earth alone you know at the end of the day we'll go we'll leave this world so let's do something that will pave way for us for internal life not something that is just for temporary enjoyment enjoyment does not last long it's fade away so as you're enjoying you have to be careful you have to draw closer to god this was a beautiful message to everybody not even i think it was a me um a program among the ladies because it was so, in the beginning it was like ladies I, I want to tell you a story so this story is not only for the ladies this message is not only for the ladies for everybody in general yeah thank you guys so much for watching don't forget to smash that subscribe button for more like share and comment i'll see you in the next one bye